Hi, I'm Katie, and you can find me sharing lots of DIYs and things to build over at housefullofhandmade.com. And today I'm really excited to be here on the Craig YouTube channel to share how to make this modern coffee table. Now, um, I love coffee tables because they are great for a weekend build or if you want to try something new. And that is exactly what this coffee table has got. I've created the coffee table in two different pieces and the outside piece I covered in a grass cloth wallpaper to give it this unique look. And then the bottom piece is created with this awesome sliding table and a huge bin for tons of storage. It's great for storing things like blankets, toys, uh, board games, anything you need to have stored away. And you've got the table here to allow access to the whole thing. And it's a great place to store things that you want in arm's reach, but off the top of your coffee table. I'm excited to show you how easy this one is to put together with all of my favorite Craig tools. The first step of building the coffee table is going to build the legs and the outside. We're going to make a nice U from our um, one and a half inch thick material. Now I'm building my outside completely out of inexpensive Douglas fir construction lumber. These are two by tens that you can buy at any home improvement store. And the reason I'm doing that is because I'm going to actually cover the entire perimeter of it with a grass cloth wallpaper. And the wallpaper um, will give me the appearance of grass cloth, but hopefully will be a lot more um, cleanable, washable, and it's definitely a lot more inexpensive. I've already cut the pieces I need for the legs in the top of the coffee table and I have two pieces of 2x10 lumber for each of those. And all of the build plans can be found on craigtool.com. I'll make sure to put a link to that in the description below. Now the um, pieces I cut one inch bigger than the measurements in the plans. And the reason for that is I'm going to be using pocket holes to um, attach the two pieces together to make one nice wide piece. And so the extra inch allows me to get those attached and then to square off the ends at the edge so that I have um, a perfectly square piece to create this coffee table piece. Now, one other thing to note, because I am using a construction lumber, it has this little bit of a round over on all of the pieces. And I don't want that when I put the two pieces together. So I'm taking all the pieces over to my table saw and just ripping off a, qu a quarter inch on that inside edge. This is also going to take that nine and a quarter inch piece, um, which is a two by 10 down to an even nine inches, which will give me a nice 18 inch wide coffee table. All of my boards have been trimmed on the inside. Now you do not have to do this on your boards. You can leave that little bit of a curve. If you're not covering the board, it can be a nice rustic element. Or if you do plan to cover the coffee table, you can fill that little bit of a gap with some wood filler to get a nice smooth surface. I have the tools available to be able to do it, so I'm gonna do it. It also gives me an even 18 inch coffee table as opposed to an 18 and a half if I would have left that quarter inch on. But now to attach these two boards together, I'm going to add pocket holes to the inside edge of one board in each set and then attach the two pieces together with wood glue and um, two and a half inch pocket hole screws since we are working with one and a quarter inch, or sorry, one and a half inch thick material. Now, um, you could just glue these together. I'm going to do it with pocket holes because I don't have enough clamps to let everything be held together while the glue dries and the pocket holes are a really great way to get that nice tight seam without having to have a lot of clamps on hand. All of the boards are prepped and we're ready to assemble them. So the leg boards, I'm going to be adding pocket holes again for one and a half inch thick material am on the one side and then we just attach it to the other side to create a giant U. And this will be the legs and the top of the coffee table. The exterior of the coffee table is done and this thing is gonna be so nice and sturdy. So it's ready for the glue to dry and then I'm gonna give it a nice sanding and I'm also going to curve over the edges here. I'm just gonna do it with my sander, starting with a really nice high grit, or sorry, low grit, so like a 40 grit sandpaper with my orbital sander to just give it a little bit of a curve 
so that um, the wallpaper will cover over nice and easy. The outside is completely sanded and I'm going to um, attach the wallpaper to it. Now, to be honest, I've never done this before. I'm kind of just winging it. So I've finished the sanding up to 150 grit and to make sure that there's no dust left on it, I'm going to start by using a tack cloth and the tack cloth just helps to pick up any fine sand paper residue that is still on your project and it's great to use before you do any kind of finishing. Next up, I'm going to be applying the wallpaper. And this will require a seam on the top because my wallpaper is 20 and a half inches wide and the coffee table is 18 inches wide plus a one and a half inch thickness on each side. So I'm going to offset my seam and try to line up the best I can. Now, this is a um, peel and stick self-adhesive wallpaper. So I'm going to just try to apply it without anything else, see what happens. If it doesn't work out or if it starts to peel up later, I probably will go back and add some wallpaper adhesive to make sure that I have a nice solid stick to it. Uh, around the edges, I'm going to have to cut and fold and I'm treating this just like I would a present if I'm wrapping a present. So I'm gonna fold over and cut around all of the edges and wrap it completely around the underside as well. The piece is wrapped and it was a little challenging, I'm not gonna lie, but um, what I learned is if your round over is a little bit off as you try to go down, you're now gonna be a little askew on your wallpaper. So I have one side that looks perfect and the other side has a couple spots that had a little wrinkle in them. Uh, wrapping it underneath, the hardest part was making sure that it didn't um, stick to itself as I was cutting around the corners. And then I wrapped it around the bottom um, I thought that would be better than cutting it flat on the bottom, but as it has moved around a little bit as I was putting the tape on, it's actually ripping it across the bottom. So I think I'm going to put some feet on it so that it doesn't rip it as it moves around for cleaning and stuff once it's installed. But now that this is all done, I can start preparing for the next part, which is building the inside. And the inside is built from plywood. I'm going to be using um, edge banding on the edges so it's got a nice clean edge and we're basically building a U again. I've set up my workstation for cutting plywood and one of the easiest ways for me to break down plywood on my own is to break it down on a piece of two inch rigid foam and I use the rigid foam as the surface for a couple reasons. First of all it fully supports the entire piece of the plywood as I'm making smaller cuts and second of all, it actually works as like a non-skid, so it doesn't move around. Um, really small pieces occasionally can shift more, but on the bigger pieces, it holds it nice and secure on my surface, which is great. And then one of my favorite tools for breaking down the plywood is the Craig AccuCut, and mine has been used so much. It makes it so that I can break down plywood without help. And so to set this up, I'm going to start now, the plans say to use a half sheet of plywood. You can get all the cuts off of a half sheet of plywood. However, I'm using um, scraps left over from the headboard build that I just finished. And this is going, I have exactly the plywood I need to um, build the coffee table um, left over from that headboard. So it's a really great um, two for project if you want to build this amazing headboard as well. So I'm going to be I'm measuring out and I'm going to do my cross cuts first um, and these are the measurements that I took based off of the actual build which mine are just a 16th inch bigger than 45 which is what it calls for so I'm going to cut the pieces in half and then I will rip them lengthwise one for the bottom and two for the sides then for the last little scrap is going to be the tabletop piece and I'll rip that down as well into the appropriate size and that will sit on top and all the specific measurements for the plywood and the top are all going to be found at craigtool.com.
the uh, storage piece for the coffee table is all done and I have added um, edge banding to all four edges of my shelf piece. Now my shelf piece is, ended up being a little bit shorter than planned. I had a miscut on it and it's supposed to be 17 inches wide by 22 inches long. And I accidentally cut it 16 inches wide by 22 inches long. So I have um, shifted around, so now I'm 17 by 16. It'll still give me a nice shelf that I can move around um, and I'll just have more access to my storage. I just did not want to cut a whole new sheet of plywood for one piece um, that was this small. So uh, that is gonna be a little bit different. I'm going to sand, stain, finish. However, I'm gonna finish the base pieces and then we'll be back tomorrow to um, attach them to the top piece. The two pieces are finished and I am ready to attach them together. Now I've placed a quilt on my table so that I don't damage this wallpaper as I maneuver it around. And I've got the pocket holes that have already been drilled in the sides and the bottom of my side pieces. I'm going to be using one and a quarter inch pocket hole screws to attach this centered in between the center piece. Now the great part about the pocket hole system by Craig is that you do not require glue to hold it together. So where I'm not going to be putting glue on top of my wallpaper, I can still attach this um, plywood piece inside and it'll be nice and secure. Also while attaching it, I'm going to use my multi-mark tool. Now this tool is super handy for making sure things are perfectly centered. So I can make sure that I have the exact same reveal on both sides of the plywood piece when I attach it to the big piece, even though my plywood, which is technically shy of three quarters of an inch, isn't gonna give me a perfect one inch difference. I can use this to make sure that the difference is exactly the same. I've attached the plywood storage piece into the top and sides, and the last step I mean, you could leave it like this if you wanted, but I want to add this shelf that will slide back and forth here that allows you to have a place. I see this as the perfect place for the remote or things that you want to keep handy at the coffee table, but you don't want cluttering up the top. So right now it's just a piece of plywood. So I'm going to um, center it onto the storage compartment and mark my lines on both sides. And then I will router out just slightly bigger than a three quarter inch groove. And that's just gonna make it so it slides easily. Um, and router cut out on your table saw or cutting it out with a circular saw using the AccuCut anyway, just do about a quarter of an inch and that'll allow this to slide without falling off. And now your coffee table's all done. All that's left is to find a helping hand to get it moved in the house. This is a sturdy coffee table that is going to be able to hold up to many years of use. And I love the large storage bin. Now in order to make sure that the sliding does not damage any of the plywood or edge banding that I have here, I did add a small strip of felt to the um, top of the groove inside and I just glued that in with some hot glue. I also added feet to the bottom so that I could keep that up off the floor to protect the wallpaper from rubbing if the table gets moved around for um, cleaning or anything else. And if you want to find more projects like this, please come and visit me over at housefullofhandmade.com and make sure to take some time to explore all the amazing projects here on the Craig YouTube channel.